Hi, I'm not good at knowing what else I can do to show the computer screen. I'm sure there's fancier options, but we'll just do it this way. So I want to show you how I export. This is an interlocking chart. It's got all the dots all over it. And I will just go export to Excel. And I just save this part here in my downloads folder because I don't want this file. This file that it gives me is junk. <laughs> We're going to change it immediately. So it says some data might be lost if you do this version that it gives. So I always have to save it as something else. And I would put it in the folder. So like I have a coffee time mug folder here. I would put it in that folder. I would save it as an Excel workbook instead of the CSV. And then that gets rid of that notification. And then the first thing I do is erase this key information. I just right click on it and I clear the contents. Now we have just numbers. It's ones and twos because there was only two colors. So I go control A for select all. I think it's up here somewhere too. You can select all. I'm not sure if select all is necessary, but I always do it. And then over here, find and replace. We're going to replace anywhere it has a one we want to change those ones, change the formatting. I'm going to give it an outline border and a fill. I use this blue as my fill, sometimes this one, but it does, it's up to you. Pick whatever you want to be your dark color. And then I replace all and it says, okay, ta -da. and then I'm going to do number two, only I'm going to change the formatting. I want the fill just to be white. You can pick your own colors. It doesn't matter. Replace all. Okay. Close. So now we have all these boxes that have ones and twos and colors. And now I'm also going to right click and clear the contents. We don't need the numbers. We also have them weirdly shaped. So if I control A again, it'll expand it. I'm not sure if you need to do it now or later. I do some of these steps a few times because I'm a goofball. I do 26.4 as the row height and then format column width 4.11. I have no idea why those numbers are so different, but that's what it does. Then, depending on how you want to number your rows, I usually start over here at the bottom corner, right? So I've been numbering my columns. One, two, whoops, two, right? And if you just select those and then you take this little bubble at the bottom and go across all the way to the other end, it auto numbers it for you. And then that whole row, I copy it and I bring it up here and I insert them above. So now there's a tiny line. I can make that a little bit smaller if I wanted to. And then I do the same for this, the columns, obviously columns and rows. So here, when I do my counting, this is actually, I need to know round zero one two I think it was and what I often do is I just copy from a different because I've done it enough times I'm just gonna open a different one and copy it and you can you can do this the same way I don't mind if you use the numbering system or whatever gotta just find it <laughs> okay so this is what I've been doing I guess this one's a darker blue so you can see how it's zero and one, zero is below it. And then I have these little arrows. That's the part that I copy. So you can do that too if you'd like to, I really don't care. So that one I would put here. And I'm gonna actually change, I'm gonna control all, find and replace. I want no numbers. The formatting of choose this I'm just going to replace with the darker blue because apparently that's what I've been using. Yeah, okay. So this is, this is now going to be repeated all the way up. There we go. And apparently I forgot, which is why I always copy. I started this at zero, I forgot. <laughs> so I'm just going to change that. It's this here. 
I didn't start with one. I started with zero. I can show you, or you can just have a copy of my key if you like as well. And that's why when you read the key, it tells you that all of these even numbered rows and columns are always using the main color. That's why I did zero here because zero is then it's always even numbered our main colors. And this row, we're going to copy it and bring it to the top again because I had needed that to be the same. And then I do the same over here, only the arrows are facing the other direction. So these four, first four is what I put. You'll have to type your own the first time, but then you can copy and paste from your other projects. Oh, I need another row here. Um, insert. There we go. Uh, copy. So you can see there's three three empty white ones here. And the way I lock mine in, one, two, three, is it actually turns it into... Then there's a zero below it. And then I drag it up. So that is how I do the boxes being the same size and the numbering and the colors without the numbers. And then I also will go up to the page layout and I make the margins narrow. And then I print titles. I change the page order to be over and then down. And in the margin section, I center it. And in the header and footer section, I don't want to scale it with the document because often that's, I'm, if I want a one page version of this, then it will make the words really tiny. So my custom header would be like pattern title. Oops, goodness. Okay, it's not real, so whatever. Pattern title, you can change it in here if you want it to be bold or whatever. And then the custom um, footer. Over here, I put my copyright, which I always have to copy and paste from somewhere else because I never, I don't know how to type a copyright symbol. So I would copyright Ashley Bratzel. And then over here, I'd put page number one of numbers. So it goes page of whatever, how many pages. So then you could go print preview and you would see that it's like, it decides how many squares to show. So if you go to scaling, you can fit the sheet on one page and that's good for if your people are viewing on the screen, then they don't have to switch between pages. So I always um, print it, but as a PDF. So you probably have this option of Microsoft print to PDF. It technically just like saves it as a PDF. And I would save that as chart something something in the folder. And I'd also save this file. And then you have to save this file as something else. Otherwise, you'll lose the formatting. So you need two, two Excel files if you want two different types of chart formats. So now if I've saved this as, you know, mug wall hanging multiple page, then the only thing that I need to change is in the print preview, this scaling options, custom scaling options. So you can adjust it and I would say, okay, maybe I want this one to be four pages wide by, I don't know, four pages tall or whatever it would be. And then you can see, well, it's kind of weird. It's got too many things here. So I'd go back home. Nope, to the arrow thing. I go view, page break, preview, and then zoom out so that I can see more. And I could say, okay, it's page one, page two. You can kind of grab these little blue things and maybe this one, I only need two pages. Oops, now it did one page. Control Z, undo. Um, so this one, I might say, well, I want it to be in the middle. So I've got one page, two pages. And then down here, it's doing one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven, eight is very small. So I would probably get my calculator out and say, well, there's this many rows. If I divide it into four or three or whatever I want, and I would just move this line to make the, div the divisions be what I want them to be. And then you have to file. Um, you can either print it as a PDF or save it as a PDF either way. But that is basically how I do it. I know that is like a crappy tutorial, but I hope it will help or at least give you a starting point. And that's it.